Hello everybody and welcome to week 10 of our video series that accompanies Max Lucado's book, Life Lessons from Mark. This week we'll be covering lesson 10 entitled Salvation Through Faith, which coincides with Mark chapter 10. To start with, I'll be summarizing one central theme from chapter 10 of the Gospel of Mark in the what's going on portion of the video. The theme I will be discussing is a life of service. And then after that, in the life lessons portion of the video, I will talk about salvation through faith as it relates to the story of Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 22, entitled, The Rich and the Kingdom of God. All right, let's kick it off with what's going on in Mark chapter 10. As always, Mark covers a lot of ground. He changes themes and he moves around a lot. He starts in the beginning of chapter 10 talking about divorce. In summary, the Pharisees question him about divorce and Jesus rebukes the Pharisees' interpretation of the Old Testament law of men being able to divorce their wives. He finishes with one of my favorite scriptures, Mark 10 verse 9, Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Basically saying, from now on, divorce is a sin. Then in the middle of Mark chapter 10, we read about Jesus predicting his death for a third time. Now what I find interesting about this time is that none of the disciples questioned Jesus about it. They finally just accept it as fact and as God's will. Finally, they are in obedience. And we read about the sons of thunder, James and John, asking Jesus to place them on his right and left in heaven. The boys are pretty proud of their relationship with Jesus and feel like their service and ministry and testimony are worthy of such a request. But Jesus being Jesus sees the pride in their request, which brings us to the central theme I chose from Mark chapter 10, a life of service. So, after James and John make their requests, we see the other ten disciples pretty upset with James and John. Oddly, they weren't upset of the audacity of their request or that it was prideful and sinful. Instead, they were angry that James and John had asked first. You see, it was in the hearts of all of the disciples that they be seated next to Jesus in heaven. Jesus sees the pride and envy in all of their hearts, and he calls them close. And he says this from Mark chapter 10, verses 42 to 45. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Oof. Man, Jesus laid the smack down. Oh, he does it pretty gracefully, but Jesus understands that his teachings are contrary to what they grew up with. And Jesus understands that the only examples they have witnessed are the Pharisees and the Gentiles. So he uses the example of the Gentiles saying that the rulers use their high standing to rule over their subordinates. Now the disciples would have understood this, but then Jesus follows, Sorry, this is not so with you guys. Instead, your higher standing with me and with the Father must be set aside and you must become a servant to everybody. Jesus follows with, just if you have seen me serve everybody, so must you follow my example and become a slave to everyone. Jesus is saying, greatness in my kingdom is marked by a life of service. And wow, like what a high standard he set for us. If we want to be great in Jesus' mind, we must be a slave to all. Now, in the Greek, the word for servant and slave are the same word. And Jesus sets that standard high. We have read the scriptures. We know of how Jesus continually gave of himself. We know of all the miracles and the teachings. We know of the grace he extended ta to tax collectors and prostitutes. And we know of his ultimate sacrifice on the cross. And Jesus says, do that. Follow my example, not the example of the world, not, not the example of the Pharisees, but my example of humble service, 
often to my own detriment, often in hardship. This is what awaits those in a life spent in service. And that is the central theme for this chapter. All right, let's switch gears and begin the life lessons portion of the video. One of the crucial tenets of the Protestant faith is the biblical truth of salvation through grace. We can't buy our way into heaven, and we can't do enough good works to overcome our sin to get us into heaven. Truly, the only way into heaven is faith that Jesus Christ is our eternal, sacrificial lamb that died for the atonement of our sins. And this biblical truth is outlined in Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 22. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and looked at him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. In this story, Jesus outlines truths that the man in the story already knew. He tells the man, you know the commandments. How have you been doing in that regard? And pridefully the man says, I've kept all of them since I was a boy. Jesus knew that this was a lie, for everybody has sin in their lives, and yet the scriptures say that he looked on the man with love. And he says, sorry, there's one thing you lack. In order to follow me, you have to sell everything. Give it to the poor. And to this the man's face fell. And why? Because he was a rich guy. This scripture is a tough one, and this story is a tough one. I think it's convicting and confusing. Is, Je is Jesus telling us to sell everything we have to become missionaries? Is he telling us that we can't have nice things? Well, no, but what Jesus is saying is that our worldly wealth is God-given. He has blessed us with money to maintain our own lives, to cover the expenses of living a life in Iowa and in America, but... He has also given us worldly wealth as a talent. In other words, God gives us wealth as a way to even the scales between the rich and the poor. In the Bible, a talent was a unit of weight, and our finances have been bestowed upon us so that we not only cover our expenses, but also those of those less fortunate than us. Our job is to even out the scales between rich and poor. Secondly, and more importantly, the main theme of this story is that following the law won't get us into heaven. It is only through Jesus Christ that we have that honor. It is only through Jesus' gift of grace that we are allowed into the kingdom of heaven. Salvation through faith is our only way to the Father. Jesus knew this man's heart. He knew that money was this man's idol and this man's sin. It was his barrier to faith, so Jesus used it as the defining object over loving him. And it's a different idol for all of us. Do we love money or God? Do we love our job more than Jesus? Do we love our children more than Jesus? Do we love our iPhone or Jesus? Now just think about that for a second. Are we willing to give up our phones for Jesus? Try it. Go without it for one month, or better yet, don't look at your phone during church service. Many of us can't even do that. In short, the story of the rich man and the kingdom of God is a reminder that we all have idols in our life that we put before Jesus. And it's only through faith in the atonement of his sacrifice that we get into heaven. Well, I'd love to talk more about this topic more, but I sense you've had enough. We'll call it a day and say that that is it for lesson 10. We talked about a life of service and salvation through grace. Well, I hope that your small group discussions are led by the Holy Spirit and that you are growing closer to God through our walk through Mark. And I pray that you continue to meditate on his word on this lesson and journal your thoughts when they come to you. 
See you next time.